Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And to each of you, I want to congratulate you on your nominations. It's a tremendous honor to be nominated to represent your nation in this way, and I wish you the best as you move through the hearings process. Um, I'd like to start with an area that's of particular uh, strategic concern, although all of your countries are terribly important, the countries that you're, you're hoping to represent the United States to, but that's Israel. And Mr. Nides, I wanted to uh, reach out to you. Earlier this year, um, on a 97 to 3 vote, an amendment that I co-authored with Senator Jim Unhoff was passed to ensure that Jerusalem continues to be recognized by the United States as the capital of uh, Israel. That's pursuant to the Jerusalem Embassy Act of 1995. The Jerusalem Embassy Act of 1995 codified U.S. policy, first ensuring that Jerusalem would be the capital of Israel and that Jerusalem should remain an undivided city. Mr. Nides is nominated to be our ambassador to Israel. Do you support the Jerusalem Act of 1995? And in particular, do you agree that Jerusalem should continue to be recognized as the capital of the state of Israel by the United States, that Jerusalem should remain an undivided city, and that the United States should maintain its embassy to Israel in Jerusalem? Uh, Senator, thank you for your question. And um, the answer is yes. Um, uh, the capital of uh, Israel is Jerusalem. The embassy is in Jerusalem. I, if I am confirmed, I will be living in Jerusalem. Uh, obviously, that is uh, something that I will be looking forward to. Uh, obviously, at a certain point, if there is a negotiation between the Palestinians and, and the Israelis as it relates to a final status, long from now, that will be up to the parties. But from the United States' perspective, the Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Well, with respect to the Palestinian negotiations, I'd like to probe further on that. Please. Um, Prime Minister Naftali Bennett recently visited here, uh, met with our president. President Biden told him, uh, told Prime Minister Bennett that he intends to open a U.S. consulate for Palestine in Jerusalem. Prime Minister Bennett's response was not positive to that. Uh, in fact, he indicated publicly uh, his opposition to President Biden's proposal. Uh, Foreign Minister uh, Lapid called Biden's proposal a bad idea. Um, indeed, the U.S. Embassy currently has a Palestinian Affairs Unit at Agron. I visited that facility in June of this year. Um, if the U.S. government were to open and maintain an embassy, a consulate, a legation, some type of function like that, some type of diplomatic facility in Jerusalem, besides the one that exists inside the uh, U.S. Embassy to the State of Israel, do you think that that course of action is consistent with the Jerusalem Embassy Act of 1995? Uh, do you think that that supports the philosophy of that law, that Jerusalem is the undivided capital of the State of Israel? Uh, Senator, yes, I do. I fundamentally believe that um, the Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. The embassy will be in Jerusalem. As you know, the issue around the consulate, that consulate has existed in one form or another for almost 130 years, in some one form or another. So uh, obviously, the opening of the consulate, if it occurs, and as you know, the president has, has indicated, as well as the secretary, that we'd like to open the, the consulate, it will have no impact upon the, the capital of Israel being Jerusalem. So uh, this is something, obviously, if I'm fortunate enough to be uh, confirmed, I'll be obviously addressing, but I've obviously taking my direction for the president and the secretary of state. I appreciate the position you're in. I just hope that we take into account the position of our ally Israel, our strongest ally in the Middle East, and their concerns I think are very relevant and pertinent to, to, to this discussion. I'd like to turn to another point very quickly, and that is yesterday the House decided to remove funding to resupply and replenish the Iron Dome uh, rocket defense system. I was very disappointed to see it. I'm also happy that Leader McConnell and Appropriations Committee Vice Chairman Shelby are proposing a continuing resolution that will include a billion dollars to replenish the Iron Dome. In fact, earlier this year, I introduced the Emergency Resupply for the Iron Dome Act of 2021 to immediately resupply the Iron Dome. I did that along with our colleagues, Senator Cruz and Rubio here. Um, I also visited Israel with Senator Cruz immediately after the 11-day war. I saw the benefit of having a technology like that that saved both Israeli and Palestinian lives. And I want to ask you if you agree that that defensive capability that we provided through the Iron Dome is actually a, a benefit to our relationship with Israel and to their position there. Absolutely, Senator. I'll make just one, one quick point. Number one, the President has been very clear 
that he supports the replenishment of the Iron Dome. Number two, obviously it's in our national security interest to support a very, very important ally in the region. And this is a defensive mechanism. It is for to stop rockets from raining in on Israel. So we are uh, supportive of the replenishment and it's in our national security interest and it is our desire and hope that that's, those funds will be provided uh, to uh, replenish the Iron Dome. Thank you. I'm very pleased to hear that position. Thanks very much.